Charging curve is a term you hear thrown about a lot in the EV world, but it can be tricky to get your head around. We've been so accustomed to pumping fuel into our cars for decades. Many people expect the process to be the same for EVs. It's really not. So stick around as we take a look at charging curves, what they are, what it means, and some of the best of them out there. Welcome to the channel. My name is Martin Lee. And if you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. So in a nutshell, what is a charging curve? Essentially, it's the change in speed that your car will charge at as it gets more full. The rate that your EV charges depends on a number of factors, but the most important is what the state of charge is. In principle, when it's nearly empty, it charges quickly, and when it's nearly full, it charges slowly. Let me use one of my favorite analogies to explain it, and I know some people don't like it when I use this, the hose pipe analogy. So you've got a bucket and a hose. You put the nozzle into the bucket and you twist the tap. The water will fly in at a rate of knots and nothing will spill over the top of the bucket. But as you fill up, you're gonna have to slow down the amount of water coming out of the end of the hose, otherwise, you're gonna slosh it all over the place. Now, there's also a cinema analogy. Let me try this one. The first person walking in has a whole theater to choose from, any seat you want. Easy to get people in at the start. But as that auditorium fills up, seats become more scarce and it's trickier to find a spot. Once you get up to 95% full, it's, it's tough to find a spot sometimes and it can take a while to find your seat. Right, I think I'm gonna stop with the analogies now. All of that is to say, when you see cars advertised as having a certain DC charging speed, it's the big number, it's the headline, it's the one they'll lead within the advertising and the marketing. Say it says 120 kilowatt fast charging. Well, you might think you can plug in that you'll get that speed for however long you are connected for. It's simply not the case. Firstly, you have to be connected to a unit, a charger, that can dispense the required amount of power. And many of the existing chargers around the world, even new ones going in, are uh, peaking 50 kilowatts. But if you do plug into a unit that is 150 kilowatts on 5% state of charge, the car can very quickly ramp up to its maximum peak rate. But then you won't stay at that peak rate of 120 kilowatts all the way to 100%. The car will peak at 120 kilowatts in theory, but then it'll begin to slow down. You'll hear it called ramping down. And it does that as the battery fills up. Now, what we're talking about here is the voltage of each individual cell raising, but we'll call it filling up with electricity because it's a bit of a beginner video that we're making. The ramping up and tapering down that we call the charging curve. So why do charging curves even matter at all? Well, they do matter and also they don't, I suppose. For many people, they'll almost never use a public DC fast charging station day in, day out. They'll often top up at home on AC at seven kilowatts overnight. Maybe a handful of times they'll use that fast charger on a long trip. Or maybe they'll do a commute and they haven't got home charging and they'll use a DC fast charger maybe once a week. I know people that don't have EV chargers at home and that's the way that they have their electric car. They don't mind stopping for 25 or 30 minutes a couple of times a week, but it's certainly not a daily occurrence. But for some people who drive for work and take regular long trips to visit family, it is more important to understand about charging curves. They want to know how long it's gonna to take to charge, maybe to go from 10 to 50% or 20 to 80%. So they can get back on the road as quickly as possible. Although the car might peak at your 120 kilowatt theoretical example that we picked for this video, it's no good if it does that only to 20% and then it's gonna drop down quickly by the time it fills up. But what probably affects all of us and may well be the most important bit of EV learning and understanding with charge curves is how it affects charging when your battery is nearly full. And it can be frustrating to see another EV owner hogging a DC fast charger. And I'll use that word carefully as they go from say 95 to 100%. 
what they're effectively doing is trickle charging their battery on a scarce piece of charging resource where other people could plug in and get speeds of 5, 10, 20 times what they're using. We're going to be nice and say it's just because a person hasn't yet fully understood the charging curve, but it can take maybe 45 minutes to get to 80% of an EV's battery, say, and another 45 minutes to get that final bit topped up. So really, if you don't need a DC fast charger for that last few percent, please let somebody else use it. Now the speed you get is determined by so many factors, it's impossible to definitively say what the charge curve is for a certain car. But we can get data from the likes of, well, some of the charging networks. One that I really love is a network called FastNed here in Europe. They publish some of the charts because they've got the data. They can see what EVs are plugging into their network and how fast they charged. Let's look at some examples quickly to get a feel for what we mean. And where better to kick off things than with the beautiful Audi e-tron GT. Now the car peaks at 260 kilowatts on DC, around about there, maybe a bit over. That is if you can find a DC unit capable of outputting that kind of power. But like we said, it won't hold that speed from zero to 100%. Let's say you plug in at 5%. Let's say that you're not driving all the way down to zero. Pretty rare occurrence that. And you plug in at 5%. The car will hit 260 kilowatts of power if the battery is in the right condition to take it. And that means it has to be nicely warmed up. It will hold that speed until the battery gets to about 50% full. Then it will start to drop down. We call it ramping down in stages. And by the time the battery gets to 75% capacity, it'll pull about 100 kilowatts. And what's really impressive is the GT can hold on to about 50 kilowatt charge speeds up to 95%. Some EVs out there won't even charge at 50 kilowatts. At the other end of the spectrum, let's look at the Mazda MX-30. In many places where this car is on sale, it is the slowest charging mainstream electric car on a DC fast charger. We've reviewed the Mazda on this channel before and it's really nice inside, it feels great, but the battery and the charging feels like something from yesteryear. Underwhelming, many people say. The Mazda will peak at just 37 kilowatts. Even an original Leaf from a decade ago can beat that. But a big problem for the Mazda is the charging curve. Once the car gets to about half full, maybe 55%, it ramps down. By the time the battery is 80% full, if you're getting 20 kilowatts, you'll be lucky. Okay, let's move on. Last but certainly not least, let's have a quick look at the Volkswagen ID4, one of the most popular EVs on the road in Europe. And the ID4 has a peak charge rate of about 135 kilowatts on DC. Now, 135 is really nice, very fast for cars in that price bracket. It's not market leading, but it's decent. But what's the curve like? The battery pack is 82 kilowatt hours. You get to use 77 kilowatt hours of the total. The ID4 will quickly ramp up to its peak of 130, 135, but we start to see it slowing down when it gets to about 30% state of charge. And it'll hold on to about 100 kilowatts at about 50% state of charge. And the good news is it'll plateau a little and hold a good rate of about 80 kilowatts to 80%. And like I say, all of this is dependent on so many variables. What percentage your car is when you plug in. It's impossible to say that X car, when plugged in at Y percent, is always going to hit a certain speed because your battery needs to be warm and there are other variables in play as well. So you can't publish one charging curve for every single EV out there. My goodness, I wish we could. It would make things so simple to explain. That's our quick video on charging curves. Of course, it's far from an exact science and the scene is changing constantly. Even an over the air update can make the car that you have different from the one that you originally bought. Ah, for better and for worse, some over the air updates can increase your charging speed. Some can slow it down as Tesla have done to early owners of their Model S's in the name of trying to keep those battery cells in the healthiest condition possible. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Is your EV's charging curve something you ever think about? Or maybe it makes next to no difference to you. Do you think more people should understand it as they come into the EV world? How can we best explain charging curves? Does it really 
matter. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more like it, and I'll see you on the next one.